It's Tuesday, March 31st. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And today I have some important data to share with you from the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation out of the University of Washington that can tell folks how long this first wave how long it will be for this first wave of the epidemic to peak or about 15 to 20 days out depending upon your geographical location here in the United States and it will also help determine which hospitals will be hardest hit and who's going to need the extra personnel and equipment to get through this pandemic. First let's start with the Johns Hopkins numbers cases worldwide as of to date 31 March 803 650 cases deaths worldwide 39,033 that was as of this morning here in the United States 164,785 cases known reported cases 3,173 deaths in the United States 31 states are under stay-at-home orders across the United States 3.3 million folks have have applied for unemployment Based on the data from the Institute of Health Metrics, which we'll go inside and take a look at here in detail, they're estimating possibly 80,000 fatalities here in the United States from this first wave of the pandemic. To put this in perspective, the Spanish flu of 1918 and 1919, by the way, look up history guy, Spanish flu influenza outbreak, one of my favorite YouTube channels. It's the Spanish flu name is a bit of a misnomer and he does a great job of explaining the whole situation. The Spanish flu here in the United States resulted in about 675,000 U.S. deaths. The Civil War, by comparison, the worst tragedy to hit the United States resulted in 620 to 750,000 casualties. Nearly 2.5% of the entire U.S. population at the time was lost to the Civil War. So far less numbers than any of some of the worst events that's ever hit the United States. But most importantly, how are you doing? What's going on in your neck of the woods, as Al Roker likes to say? Uh, how are you reacting to the situation at hand? And uh, do you know anybody that's affected by this? Are you affected by this? Have you gotten sick? Has anybody that you know gotten sick? And how, how have they gotten through it? Keep us posted in the comments section below. Everything here at the Blanco Lirio Global World Headquarters is fine. The kids are home, homeschooling. We got our, the snow is pretty well melted. The trails I've got reopened right behind the house here. So we got plenty of green space to wander around in right out back here. Been keeping very busy here on YouTube and plenty of projects to work on at the hangar. So let's go inside and take a detailed look at this data from the Health Metrics and Evaluation Center at University of Washington and see how you can keep track of the pandemic in your state. Here's the home page of healthdata.org. Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation, Independent Global Research Center at the University of Washington. Here's their information there. Here's some of the interesting projects they're working on down here. But right here, COVID-19 state by state US projections. Starting at the top, United States of America overall, we're looking, at, look at this, these numbers over here on the right. Bed shortage, 54,000 beds, ICU bed shortage, 13,856 ICU beds, invasive ventilators needed, needed 26,381. Here's the curve starting at today March 31st we're located right about here on the curve the purple line showing all beds needed the green line showing ICU beds needed and the blue line showing invasive ventilators needed the lighter shades of color are the worst case and best case scenarios and across the entire United States, it shows it peaking out right around April 15th. Here's the deaths per day, the red line. This is the actual data bringing us up to present as of March 30th, 518 deaths per day. And here is the projection, uh, again, showing a minimum, worst case 
and best case scenarios peaking out around April 15th in the numbers of deaths per day and then dropping off dramatically by June 1st. Total number of deaths working up from as of March 30th, 2,991. Of course, that's not been updated yet on this data. They update it every morning. And here is the projected case at this time. So it'll be interesting to watch this over time to see how this changes. This model gets changed um, as we get more data. A projection projecting a total of about 83,000, close to 84,000. Again, with worst case scenarios up over 140,000 and best case around 40,000. So that's what we want to keep track of across the United States. Right here we got uh, a tab which allows you to select your individual states. So let's go over to my home state, California, and see what's going. Stay at home, see what's going on. Stay at home order was on 19 March. Schools closed 19 March, non-essential closed 19 March. And so far, California looks okay. Zero bed shortage, zero ICU bed shortage. In fact, they're predicting that California should be okay as far as beds go, but they will need some additional ventilators, or they will need 1,517 ventilators. So when you get to the state-by-state -state breakdown, you get these solid lines. This is where we're talking about bending the curve so as to not overwhelm the medical community. So here in California, the top straight purple line is the number of beds available, 26,654 up here. This lower straight green line shows the ICU beds available. at 1,993. Now you look at the data, project the data into here. Here we are at uh, April 1st. And we can see as far as beds available, we're well under the curve. In fact, it looks like even at the worst, we'll be well under the maximum number of beds. And the ICU and ventilators, the ICU bed shortage is gonna just, it's just gonna hit max out at the maximum level of beds it looks like there. First off for California they're talking about peaking a little bit later than the rest of the nation somewhere right around in here April 25 26 time frame at which time they're going to need they're going to need yeah they're going to need a few more beds uh, correction they're going to be just just under the number of beds according to the current data 1908 needed 1993 available So California is just going to touch that ICU beds needed. Deaths per day, solid red line, actual data, and then dotted red line, projected data. Up to 22 deaths per day back on 30 March. Peaking out around 122 per day around 28 April. Total numbers for California, looks like it's going to top out around 5,079. Again, this number, these numbers all change as we get actual data inbound. Now let's go over and take a look and see what's going on at New York. JKLMN. Right there. Look at that data change. Look how far above both straight lines this data is. New York, stay at home March 22nd. Schools closed March 18th. Non-essentials closed on 20th. Bed shortage, 60,610 bed short. ICU bed shortage, 10,602. Total number of invasive ventilators needed, 9,055. It doesn't, I don't believe that shows how many they have on hand. It's just showing the numbers they're gonna need. Again, the, here's the straight line, the, the number of uh, beds available, the straight purple line, the straight green line, way down here, uh, number of ICU beds available. ICU beds available, only 718 
All beds available, 13,000. Those are the straight lines. And then look at the data peaking early, around April 9th, the next bunch of days. They're going to need 73,620 beds. That's why you're seeing all the extraordinary actions going on around New York City with the with the hospital ship arriving. The Comfort, I think the Comfort's in New York and the hospital ship Mercy is here in Los Angeles on the West Coast. You're seeing the temporary hospitals being put up. Tent type hospitals, MASH type units being put up in the New York area. They've just far exceeded their capability or they're going to far exceed their capability. ICU beds needed 11,747. Available only 718. This you can figure as a bit of a misery index. How how hard it's going to be for everybody. This is also why they're taking so many volunteer medical people into the New York area as well. Death count, solid red, actual data, 253 per day on 30 March, peaking out around April 10th at 827 per day, and then dropping off rapidly in to the beginning of May. Total deaths, 1,218 as of 30 March, projecting upwards to about 15,788, peaking out again around 1 May. Again, data is going to change as new data comes in. Now let's look at some of the background on this information. What are the assumptions? So if we go back over here to the home page and pick up this second article on 26 March, forecasting COVID-19 impact by Dr. Christopher Murray, or Professor Christopher Murray, Importance, this study presents the first set of estimates of predicted health service utilization and deaths due to COVID-19 by day for the next four months of each state in the, in the U.S. to determine the extent and timing and excess demand for hospital services. Conclusion and relevance. In addition to the large number of deaths from COVID-19, the epidemic in the U.S. will place a load well beyond the current capacity of hospitals to manage, especially for ICU care. These estimates can help inform and develop the implementation of strategies to mitigate this gap, including reducing non-COVID-19 demand for services and temporarily increasing system capacity. By the way, those ships that are coming into L.A. and New York, those are not taking COVID-19 patients because they cannot isolate patients on board those ships. It's to unload the demand on regular hospitals with isolation capability and take some of those patients out of there and, and put them on the ships instead. These are currently, these are urgently needed given the peak volumes are estimated to be only three weeks away. The estimated excess demand on hospital systems is predicated on the enactment of social distancing measures in all states that have not done so already and within the next week and maintenance of these measures throughout the epidemic. Emphasizing the importance of implementing, enforcing, and maintaining these measures to mitigate hospital system overload and prevent death. So all of this data that you're seeing here is predicated on social distancing on taking the measures that we're doing now and continuing them on through the worst case scenarios are for in the event that you were to reduce these measures so I hope this gives you a better understanding of some useful data that you can use throughout this pandemic and as you can see things are going to change dramatically based on where you're located geographically so keep up your social distancing measures and your hygiene, sanitation, <laughs> Lysol wipes, if you can find them still. Thanks again for your support, and thanks again for your support on Patreon for making these videos possible. See you here.